Hello my friends and welcome back. But today we're here to take a look at the affordable flex fund pens or flexible fund pen nibs that we can easily find in the market today and we'll take a look if they are worthy of uh, adding to your collection or actually useful day-to-day -day writers. Starting from the top we have the fund pen revolution, the ultra flex steel fund pen. This is relatively affordable around $60 on Amazon and then you can also get it for same price or a little bit cheaper on Fountain Pen Revolution website. The pen body seems like it's made of a combination of ebonite and plastic. Overall it's it's an okay pen. The piston mechanism works all right. What I don't appreciate is that you have to unscrew this and it's kind of like one of those Delta pens. You should have just made it easily unscrewable but I imagine this is just to post the pen so it makes it easier. It's, it's an okay pen. Uh, but when I get these pens, I'm more interested in taking that nib out and putting in one of my favorite pens, for example, the S1V200. But today we're looking at the functionality of them and see how good they are. Last time I posted a Flex video, a couple of viewers recommended I look into the Blue Do. Finally, I was able to get the Blue Do fountain pen with two different nibs. No, they're not actually different, with two nibs. This is their pen. It, say cartridge converter it seems like it would be eye droppable if you have to i haven't had to because it works okay and i don't actually go through a lot of ink with this so i have to get it like this the third one is the flexible nib factory housing for the uh, for the zebra g so this zebra g unit came with a steel nib on it but you know steel nibs steel zebra g nibs are really trash like they last a day two days and they corrode and they built gunk so it's useless what i wanted to do is use the zipper g fountain pen nib uh, zipper g in a fountain pen and have a very good ink reservoir and have a good feed and not have to worry about changing the nib every day so i got the titanium nibs from amazon i think the 10 pack is like 17 dollars, so it's pretty cheap we'll see how these function in real life and then we'll briefly We'll briefly uh, compare these to some of the heavy hitters. I have here the Magna Carta Mag 600, the newer nib that has been pretty good, and then I have my one of my most favorite flexible nibs, and that's the Regalia Writing Lab. Very very expensive pens these are. This nib is around two hundred and twenty dollars, and the Magna Carta is being sold for about, depending where you look at, three to four hundred dollars. And if you look at some of these. Uh, store special models they are over 400 so without further ado let's get into experimenting our first pen in a mini mini more okay so blue do comes first we're going to take a look at this it looks like the zebra g nib actually looks like it it is marked with a b and you can see that the tip is ever so slightly flattened compared to the zebra g I think that's just to make it a little bit less scratchy because the original many people have problem with it it's quite scratchy if you're not used to using with very sharp tip fountain pens these don't have tipping so they kind of dig into the paper if you put any amount of pressure these pens are really meant to run under their own weight so except of course when you're flexing this is inked with waterman i believe it's serenity blue Very nice thin lines, no problem writing normal. And if I just do some squiggles here, in my experience, I've learned over the years to have a very light hand with these sharper tips. It doesn't really dig into the paper. It does a very good job. There's of course feedback, but nothing that's unpleasant uh, in my experience. So let's do some flexing. You can see that the pen has a little bit of trouble keeping up with moderate to intense flexing but if you're nice with it 
it will write pretty good. If you don't try to push it, it works just fine. Overall pretty good, so it remains to be seen how long these nibs last, but it seems like they're not like stainless steel like the old Zipper G steel nibs that will wear out overnight. So moving on to the second one, this is the Fountain Pen Revolution Ultra Flex. This pen cannot get as thin of a line compared to the Zebra G and the Blue Do, but the lines on these are at least at extra fine European level, maybe fine Japanese. So it's pretty good. This is a Yovo nib, it seems like, number six. Let's do some flexing. So this fundamental revolution nibs I have had very good luck with with the steel ones they don't really railroad or stop riding they don't even really hard start or anything so to me they're big big winner in terms of affordable flex fountain pens their gold nib is a whole different story and you can see my other videos on my impression of the gold nib from fountain pen revolution but overall I am beyond impressed I'm beyond impressed with the Fountain Pen Revolution's steel ultra flex nibs not only can you get these quite affordably but you can also find the the nib unit for the Bok 250 which is the nib on S-Fine V200 so it screws in right here with the nib section and everything so and it has a feed with it but overall the Fountain Pen Revolution nib is amazing very very good the last pen that we're going to try is the Zebra G nib unit from Flexible Nib Factory so this you can buy for the Bok 250 from Flexible Nib Factory or you can get the Yovo units and put them on a Yovo compatible pen this is, happens to be the bulk one that fits the 200, so we'll just give it a go. And let's flex it a bit. This ink is also Serenity Blue from Waterman. Very, very thin lines. So if you're into handwriting, Palmer method, Spencerian and so forth this pen can do a good job at that and you can see that the pen doesn't really have problem keeping up with the flow and it seems I have looked at the feed here and the feed is very very generous and delivers a good amount of ink and I've had this nib on this feed for like about a month 
and the nib has not worn out. This is the titanium nib. Again, I don't know how long these last, but this nib so far is very, very good. Of course, this nib is not for everyone because it is a pointed tip and it doesn't have tipping. So it's quite sharp and it will dig into paper if you don't have the right paper, especially if you use any kind of cotton paper. Forget it, you will not be able to use it. So here we go again. This feed just keeps up, no problem. And it works great. So those are the three affordable fountain pen slash nibs. The flexible nib factory with the Zebra G unit cost around $40, $45 US. The Fountain Pen Revolution Ultra Flex cost around $60. You can get it cheaper sometimes on sale. They have frequent sales. And the Blue Do cost about $100 give and take. So in terms of price-wise, Blue Do is the most expensive, second most, and then the cheapest. Of course, you need a pen for the flexible nib factory. Those are the affordable nib options. I'm of course not including the Noodlers Ahab because I don't did not have a good experience with the pen. Uh, just to compare these nibs with the more premium quote flex nibs, we'll just actually add here next page Mag 600. Very, very wet nib. I'm eyedroppering this, and depending on the temperature in the room and where you go, the eyedropper, of course, can burp out some ink. You can see that the thickness that it gets is almost the same level as Zebra G. Difference being that you can push the Zebra G a little bit more because if the nib breaks, you can just put another nib on. With the Mag 600, don't do that because a new nib costs three to four hundred dollars. So you can see the premiumness of it is just. I guess it's the gold material and then there's tipping here so and a little bit more reliable you see that it every time you take the mag 600 out of the every time i take the mag 600 out of the out of the case and put it on paper it generally just writes unless it was in a cool environment and it'll burp out some ink so i have to be careful a little bit very, very nice pen it's the newer nib unit they have is pretty remarkable and has not malfunctioned and never really railroaded on me so it's, it's a worthy opponent but it's four times the price of the most expensive affordable pen then the last pen i want to compare them to is the regalia writing labs nib that's sold just as a yovo nib unit this is a whole different beast and a different planet pretty much even the mag 600 really does not compare very favorably with the Regalia writing labs. And then brace yourself for a little bit of flexing. It's going to go You get the picture this is very very wet nib and not only is it wet it is controlled wetness it's not just burping out ink the mag 600 sometimes does that burps out ink this one of course is on a very very premium pen this is the Kyushido kokari at the end of the day the fountain pen revolution steel flex nib compares very very favorably and does a very good job it can get just as thin of a line maybe even thinner compared to the regalia it's cheaper so I would definitely endorse this as a replacement for either of the premium uh, pens that we just went through I don't want to go through any of the vintage pens that will be a video for a different time and I just wanted to compare these and have basically my final thoughts so at the end I would like to give my final thoughts on which one of these I would choose as an affordable fountain pen if I were to get one of them 
If I were to use this for just writing and day-to-day, -day, taking to school and having some fun with a little bit of flexing, I would definitely go with the Fountain Pen Revolution. It is very affordable. You can buy extra nibs for it and it is reliable. So you take it out of the box, it'll write for you. It generally does not railroad unless you really like go at it and go crazy. Um, so it definitely went in my book. Not only that, you can buy nib units for your S5V200 if you're a student that's going to college, this is what I would do. I'd buy the nib unit and put it on an S5V200. That, that's the Bok 250 nib unit. And I would make sure you use a nicer ink than I have. <laughs> make sure you use a nicer ink and get some extra nibs. Just a nib that you can always put over the feet. It works great every time and you'll have a great... It works great every time and you have a lot of fun. So I would pick Fountain Pen Revolution Steel Flex on the top spot. And in terms of day-to-day -day writing, if I were to choose between these two, I would go with the Blue Do because it actually is a little more reliable. It comes basically tuned out of the box. It starts working for you. So it works. It gets great line variation. It railroads a little bit if you push it too much, but it generally works within the confines of day-to-day -day writing and a minimal mild flexing and semi-flex kind of duties, it is a very good nib and it will serve you very well and it's schoolable. So you can take it to school, do drawing and writing with it. It's not as good in terms of day-to-day -day writing, in terms of pleasure of writing as the Final Revolution, but it works very well. On the third place comes the Zebra G fountain pen nib that's made by Flexible Nib Factory. This gets a lot more thinner lines actually a lot thinner lines. The problem with the Zebra G unit that comes from Flexible Nib Factory is that it's a steel nib and on their website they do mention that these don't last. They're like very very short-lived. So it's kind of like getting a bouquet of flowers. You have to be ready like next week to get another nib in a couple of days actually. What I did was I put titanium nib. The titanium nib has done very well over the past many many days, weeks. It has not malfunctioned on me and it writes. It railroads less than this one. But sometimes the problem with the flexible nib factory unit is that it's finicky. You get it, it may not work at all. They do give you steps on making sure that it stops writing. But I've had these nibs leak. I've had them, you know, not right out of the box and do need some tuning. So if you're not into finicking with the pens, it's not the best pen for you. I do love how thin lines this gets. And if you're used to writing with pointed tip nibs, some people may prefer this over the blue do. I personally actually do prefer this when it writes because I've spent a lot of time writing with it. Nonetheless, for the masses, this is not the best option. I'll go with these two. And then if you want to do experimentation, go with this. Go give it a try. And where does that leave us with these? The video is about affordable fountain pens. These pens obviously have their own place in the fountain pen flex nib uh, world. But that's a discussion for a different video. So I thought I'd give my thoughts on these affordable pens and maybe open a discussion. If you guys have any questions, do let me know. I hope that you find this informative, enlightening, maybe a little bit entertaining as well. Thank you very much. Goodbye.